This play was good enough for us, Henry. It was Romeo and Juliet. Though, I must admit, I was rather annoyed at the idea of seeing Shakespeare done in such a wretched hole of place. Still, I felt interested, in a sort of way. And also, I was determined to make it for the first act. There was this dreadful orchestra, presided over by a young Hebrew at a cracked piano. That almost drove me away. But at last, the drop scene was drawn and the play began. Romeo was this stout, elderly gentleman with corked eyebrows and a husky tragedy voice and a figure like a beer barrel. Mercutio was almost as bad. But Juliet, oh Henry Juliet, imagine a girl hardly 17 years of age with a, a little flower-like face, a small Greek head with plated coils of dark brown hair, eyes that were like, like violet wells of passion, lips that were like the petals of a rose. She was the loveliest thing I had ever seen. You once said to me that pathos left you quite unmoved, but beauty, mere beauty could bring you to tears. Oh Harry, let me tell you, I could hardly see this girl through the mist of tears that had come across me. And her voice, I had never heard such a voice. You, of all people, know how a voice can stir one. Your voice and the voice of Sybil Fanes are two things I shall never forget. When I close my eyes, I can hear them both, with each one saying something different. And I don't know which one to follow. Why should I not love her? I do love her, Harry. She's everything to me in life. Night after night I go to see her play. I have seen her in every age and in every costume. Ordinary women, they never appeal to one's imagination. They are limited to their century. No glamour ever transfixes them. One knows them as, as easily as one knows their bonnets. They ride in the park in the morning and chatter at tea parties in the afternoon. They're quite obvious. What's an actress? How different an actress is. Oh, Harry, why didn't you tell me that the only thing worth living for is an actress? 